the music wasn't sure if it wanted to stop there or not. Hello, hello, and welcome. I'm Nick, uh, and welcome to another late night build stream, possibly the last late night build stream. Um, I say possibly, I don't know for sure. Um, but that's because, um, hang on, it's like Christmas morning. Oh, everything's in bags, so it doesn't sound like pieces. Uh, tonight we're working on, there you go, the bonsai tree uh, from the botanical collection. Um, I have had this sitting on, um, I mean, you've probably been able to see it somewhere in the background behind me floating around for literally months. Um, this, I was super excited I could get my hands on this in the first place. Um, I love the look of it. Um, it's a fantastic set. This is something that I am ex excited to, I mean, let's be real, I'm mainly excited that I will be able to just, like, have this sitting near me somewhere, nearby me somewhere. I knew by was going to be a network somewhere. Um, that's by representation. No, that's not, not that by. More like NSYNC, bye, bye, bye. <clears throat> I'm kind of sleepy, y'all. Um, known sleepy person, me. I've been wanting to get this kit for a long time, and uh, the way everything has shaken out uh, is that I think this is going to be sort of the uh, finale kit of doing kits on stream, just because, I don't know, I two major factors. One, uh, not a lot of people show up to them, like the people who do show up uh, seem to seem to appreciate like a nice relaxed hang kind of evening. And, you know, so do I. So, you know, that, that part's not bad. But the number of people, you, you know, I, th I think this is sort of the like um, prime time of streaming. So uh, we don't see a lot of folks until we hit either the later hours or lately. I swear I've been seeing more people when I'm streaming in the middle of the day on a Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> no shame on anybody. Uh, you know, you might be somebody's favorite streamer, but that doesn't mean you're everybody's favorite streamer. And that doesn't mean that person knows you exist yet. Sometimes that's what happens. Um, but that's why, but, but the other, other part of it being, um, like when it comes to video games, I have so many in my backlog that I'm super interested in playing, uh, that just get pushed to the side for playing a known quantity. Like, like, Oh, how many games do you have? that you haven't played yet because every time you sit down you just play another you know dozen rounds of halo or another day of dailies in genshin or what have you you know um playing a new game takes energy playing the game you already know like the back of your hand takes zilch energy so that's the one that you're going to play to relax um is what i found um and kits are kind of the opposite. Kits, you know, it's it's following following instructions, it's putting stuff together, and it's something that I love to do idly. I love to build model kits, like when I'm watching shows, when I need to uh, keep my hands busy, so that way my my head can focus on a um, you know, some something visually or audioly in front of me. It's it's great for. I got um, I'm gonna have to do a safe drivers course coming up sometime soon, and honestly. Uh, having some kind of kit to work on while I, I watch those videos is going to help me pay attention to the videos. It's it sounds counterintuitive, but but that is the case. Um, so uh, hey, this was an experiment. We tried it. Thanks for everybody who hang out and enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, with this, because it's been built up for so long, I'm going to say, uh, hey, we did the experiment, and uh, maybe it's over. You know, that doesn't mean it'll never happen again necessarily, but I ain't going to plan it unless, you know, something really special comes up or it's asked for or what have you. Hey, you can always ask me for stuff. I love to um, take requests. That doesn't, hmm, that's not true. That's just a thing that's not true. But I'm always willing to, to you know, listen to requests, even if I'm not always going to follow through. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so that's why we are, let me throw us over here. We can get some music back. There we go. That sounds pretty good. So you're going to hear that. Okay, you're hearing that louder than I'm hearing it, but that's okay because I don't have headphones on because that would just be uncomfortable tonight. Um, but I can hear it a little bit. You can hear me over it. I can hear me over it. 
uh, we should be good to go. I think is what I'm trying to say here. Um, but yeah, look at how big this box is. That, that's the other reason why I say this might be the last stream. Because it's going to be the last kit we're doing. Um, but this box is huge. It's it's bigger than my face. And I've got a big face. That's why I look so good on camera. Mm. <clears throat> um, so I honestly just don't know. Like, like, like looking, looking at it, it's like, okay... A lot of repetition, there's a frame, there's a lot of pieces. Like, I don't think this is going to be... Okay, everything down here, not a complicated build. This, a little complicated. This, I assume this is just going to be a bunch of repeated parts. So, again, not necessarily complicated, but probably going to be tedious. Um, and then, of course, this is the kit that has the alternate cherry blossom build, which I don't know which one I want. Like, I want to build both just because I want to touch all of these pink frogs. These are pink frogs. That's how they do the cherry blossoms. I love that. Um, but as for which one I want to be the one in my... I think this one because it has, like, the greater... Or at least here, it looks like it has the greater reach. Maybe I'll be able to tweak that in the, the build itself. Um, maybe it is also in here. See, I, I can't quite tell from the box. I have to get my hand on it. But whichever one sort of, like, is the, the configuration which casts more of a shadow is probably what I'm going to go with. Um, see, but then also, uh, the very specifically down here in the corner, apparently you just build both anyway and you just swap out the leaves whenever. It's not like you have to tear down and reuse pieces for the different configurations. So I think we're going to build all of it and then just pick one to, to leave on it for now. Um, and that sounds good to me. So how about I stop jabbering? Let's get in on this. I say, uh, you know, at the start of the stream, which is the one where I basically have to spend the entire time jabbering because I'm not playing a game that has voice acting or story or exciting music or what have you. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm actually doing kind of okay tonight in terms of, of being chatty, let's say, um, because. I woke up early for no discernible reason. Um, actually, I had um some time. Okay, y'all know about um how much do y'all know about guardian angels? I can't, I can't, I can't in earnest start the stream with that. Um, oh god, that's bag. No, that's bag six. Okay, I thought it was bag nine, and I was worried. Um, this is probably gonna. Yo, look at the blue piece remover in there. Or I, it's like teal. Yo, I've got the old school fat gray. I've got a couple of the the modern. Oh, is this connected? Yeah, it's connected. Hang on. I got I got a couple of these modern oranges, but the blue and the orange. Oh, I can use these to build my own <laughs> movie poster. I guess. Um. I'm going to assume this is one of the... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Look at those pink frogs. Look at that big pile of pink frogs. Oh, God, they look like candy. They look <laughs> they look like nerds. Also, I love that... Uh, I, I hadn't thought about this, but the white... I, I guess this is me supposed to be, like, sort of ashy bark almost you know birch looking but just on their own these look like snowflakes that's kind of neat uh but i'm gonna have to assume oh what is this piece for oh that's like bendy but it's got like hooks on it Ooh, that's a unique piece okay i'm gonna put that on my keyboard where it's easiest to see there's two of them good and Box is empty. Good. Um, what was I, I distracted myself twice already. I was saying, uh, I'm pretty sure... Oh, God. See, see, this is what I mean, where it's not going to be complicated, but it is going to be tedious. Uh, I'm assuming I don't want to just open up every bag. I'm assuming this is going to be the kind of build where it'll be like, hey, just start with bag one, and then... You know, chapter three will go into bag four, chapter five, bag 17, whatever have you. Um, so I'm not going to open any of these bags until we 
get into the book. Like, I love opening every bag and giving myself a, a headache and an extra challenge. Um, this is too much of a challenge and really, um, I am already so excited about the final product. I don't feel like I need to give myself the added, I don't need to add any, any challenge to give myself more satisfaction. I just want to see this thing done. I will do it sort of calmly and efficiently at this rate. I, I, I do have a thing for like minimalism in design, but usually not on just like plain black. Especially when you start adding the little bits of text, it's just like, oh, all right, well. So like put this and these numbers in one corner on the back and have the front be just the picture of this and maybe the logo, you know? That's, that's what we're talking about. Okay, well, I'm being nitpicky. Uh, We should probably just read these, right? Let, let's read. Let's read this first one. Okay. The art of bonsai. <clears throat> the art of bonsai. The art of growing miniature trees in decorative pots originated in China over two thousand years ago. This Lego registered trademark variety is much more modern, but the process and outcome is the same. You assemble, plant, and prune your Lego bonsai, then watch as it grows into a beautiful creation you can be proud of for yourself and share with others. Enjoy. Uh, this is about a dude. Um, I have trouble caring about dudes, so I'll tell it. I do, I do want to hear some. Okay, seeing like a very dirty. Oh, there's still a different orientation. Mm. One tree, two varieties. The biggest challenge for Nika is deciding which two leaf variations to include. The first variety is the more traditional bonsai tree, with the foliage ranges from light to dark green, with the juvenile buds being darker in color. The second tree is inspired by a Japanese cherry tree, and is much more colorful with striking light purple blossoms. They're going with it, but okay, this is where we are. What, what if it was a little less? I think it would be fine if it was a little less. The second tree is inspired by a Japanese cherry tree and is much more colorful with striking light purple blossom. It's pink. The word is pink. Both options are full of character and capture the wonder and beauty of a real I'm not going to try to uh, say it in the French or the Spanish. Um, hey, this Lego tree is made from other... It's a plant, and it's made from plants, but they're plastic. Um, fine. Okay, okay here we go. Bags 1, 2, and 3 create the base. Bag 4 is the green leaves. Bag 5 is the... Uh, cherry blossoms and six is the separate like wooden tray that they all sit on okay that makes sense <gasps> oh right look at this so this like gravel pit looking whatever it is you know what that is and i'm suddenly very uh relieved that's all of these they are not placed you just dump them in and leave them a mess, and that makes them look like gravel. I don't know how I feel that, about that, because one of my favorite aspects of LEGO is the fact that um, they are interlocking bricks, so at the end of the day, you have, you know, something that is... Um, feels like a solid piece, and as you can, the whole thing, you can sort of pick up and shake around, uh, depending on the design. Um, and this one will absolutely not be that. But it's very, oh, it's very interesting. Okay, here we go. Let's start with uh, bag one. Well, okay. Put that aside. That will hit the garbage later. I love, I love this. I, I do love this. Put that over. 
Um, this is a tiny bag. I can... Yep. Oh, is it going to be hard? Cause it's... Okay, maybe it's good we get this out of the way. All of my black pieces on the black tray. Actually, it's funny because because I can, I can I can look at them on my screen over here, uh, and the the shine on the pieces, the light is more directly um, over it here. So uh, there's like too much shine when you're looking at it, and not enough shine when I'm looking at it. That's a rubber tire. Oh, are we gonna do something mean? I bet these are gonna be the feet, but we're not gonna connect them. Either. Oh, why am I so? Oh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna put these on that somehow, and that's gonna be our rubber feet. I betcha. I betcha. Okay, I should stop guessing. I just want to build it. I just want to build it. I'm excited. Oh yeah, these. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is it silly to be this excited about Legos? I'm hearing word from my uh, producer. No, it's not. Good. I was almost worried. I got a little squeak on my table. I gotta not lean on it, oh, I got, but I gotta lean on it to keep my hands here where uh, all you fine people can watch the action. That's what you signed up for, right? To watch the action of building a Lego set? Yes, no, you did. Literally, you did. I said it in all the tweets. It's in the, the announce. This, this is what we're here for tonight. It's always a struggle. Ah, if I do it to myself, none of you can do it to me. And it gives me control back over it. That's the... I think that's that's the rationale of, like, people who got bullied too much. It's also... You remember when, um... Keanu... At least God, I think it was Keanu and I hope I'm remembering correctly and it's Keanu and not um, Edward Norton. Um, remember when Keanu was in that movie about being a baseball coach for a Little League team? Um, I believe it was called Hardball. Uh, and I don't remember much about it. I basically saw it by accident at some point. Um, but the only thing I recall about it is there's a scene early on where like he's in deep he's in debt to the mob or something and they come knocking at his door to be like hey you know if you don't pay that money we're gonna have to do bad things to you and his take on it is just like oh you're gonna have to do bad things to me and like immediately just puts his head through uh, uh, a sheet of glass on a hey how you doing Sierra you've joined us just in time we're building the um where did I put it? I already lost the box. Welcome to Newgrounds Radio. We're doing the bonsai tree tonight. I'm so excited. I'm excited. I'm chatty. I'm I'm happy to be here. I just need to make sure that it doesn't fall over and hit the radiator. It's cold, so I got a little radiator sitting here next to me at my desk. It's been keeping me um not alive. Uh, but yeah, so his his response of being threatened by the mob or whatever is he's just he puts his head through a, a, a plate glass window on a, a nearby door or something, and he's just like, "Listen, you can't threaten me because nobody can ever hurt me worse than I can." And I'm just like, "Yo, that's badass!" And like in retrospect, it's like that's like masochism from desperation. Um, but I still like it. What's cold? Um, it is the cold is like the gentle sleep instead of the panic sleep. Um, cool. Okay, so you know the joke about um, uh, when I die, I hope I go peacefully in my sleep, just like my grandfather did. Uh, not screaming in terror like all of the people on his bus. You know that joke? So hot is if you're the person on the bus, but cold is if you're the driver. If you're my grandpa, that's cold. What? 
I don't know what I'm getting at here. Uh, oh, okay. These are going to be symmetrical. How are you doing today, Sierra? Any uh, anything exciting? This was, what was today? Saturday? I slept through most of it. What's the what's the good news? Heck, what's the bad news? I, I have no idea what's going on. I woke up, ate about three thousand calories, as far as I can tell. Um, kind of out of stubbornness, more than anything else. Uh, then fell asleep and woke up, did VR, and here we are. Okay, good. A, a good day for for sleeping. All around, good. It's, it's good. Good to get that um, reassurance. Is that uh, is that communal sleeping? Is that communal napping? Oh, moving out is really good. Uh, I bet the two of them were good at it, <laughs> or at least had an entertaining time at it. I, I got so excited when I found out that that game had the if hidden in the options menu is a uh, uh, one controller two builders option. So it basically lets you do control one builder with the left hand and left side of the controller and another builder with the right hand side. So you could play two players each controlling two players, you know, one on each hand and just really try to like twist your brain like you're trying to, you know pull apart an avocado <laughs> uh, I've, I've only tried that once but it was fun granted I was also a huge fan of cookies and cream on the PS2 which if you haven't heard of it that game's still all right one of the the best like like good as a um like good as like a, a simple like platform puzzler cookies is, cookie and creams is pretty good uh uh it, it's like a simple like top down platform puzzler like linear levels but it's all about like there's a, a a split in the screen and like okay the button on the right side will open up the gate on the left so then the left person goes through and can pull the log out that lets the right person go through and it's entirely that and there's like you know jumping puzzles and this and that and like let me distract the the guy on the chain so that way you can get by and vice versa um i don't know what's at the end of it it has uh boss fights um i i highly recommend it i remember it very fondly um what you know, in in the the pre-show, this channel was all like calm songs that were nice to listen to, and now I don't know what's going on with this channel. Um, Cookies and Cream is a good time. I might. So again, that's a game that's actually pretty fun as like a, a two-player game working. Oh, and the whole thing's on a time limit. It's very like um, arcadey in that sense. Um, so it, it works pretty well as like a two-player co-op thing, like like arcade adventure game like it, it's it's not like a zelda but it, it like it's like if zelda had like a, a call of duty kill house mode but that was the whole game i don't i'm just struggling to describe something that's not this complicated at this point <laughs> um uh but that's fun it's kind of like um uh what is it uh not as long ago as that there was that game brothers that came out and brothers was same kind of thing uh you control two kids at the same time like the older brothers on the left stick the younger brothers on the right stick but that one like was very pretty very cinematic very like simple puzzles um this was a little short that one was only a couple hours um but, but, you know, it was one of those games in, in the modern sense which is like, oh, no, like, we are telling a story. We're not really challenging. You know, it, this is not a game that you brag about beating. This is a game that you play to in, enjoy the narrative of it. And it was pretty good. And, like, there's a twist at the end that was remarkably uh, affecting, uh, which is... I, I, I'm, in, I'm impressed because what it actually does is very simple and sort of, like kind of like it is like stupidly simple um but 
it's really effective and you have to be like wow you took something really simple and and made it more than the sum of its parts and you have to give it credit for that um but that was am i putting this on backwards no okay my fingers are just dumb today uh brothers was good but if you ask me in the spectrum of shared controller experiences all right stick with me here micro machines for the nintendo 64 had a shared controller mode where uh because so uh, what was it micro machines if you're not familiar top down racer uh the way it's always been is like a pack of like two to four cars and as soon as one car gets far enough ahead that they have all the rest of the cars have like sort of fallen off the back of the screen because the camera follows the front car um as soon as everybody else falls off the back of the screen they get a point everyone's reset and starts again um and uh yeah no i love micro machines too i i have a col uh, like a, a a corner you know behind a beaded curtain part of my steam library where i keep all of the the micro machines and spiritual successor games um but micro machines on the n64 it had the share controller mode where it did the same thing it was like automatic acceleration for everybody and then you had left right and brake brake was on the trigger and left and right was either the d-pad or the c buttons depending on which side of the controller you were on and one time we got eight people together and played an eight player game of micro machines on four controllers on a single n64 um and that was great that was dumb that was great that was a good nonsense mess of a time um and you remember like hanging out with people good times good times uh yeah, the, the good ones these days, uh, if you've been out of the Micro Machines game for a while, I think they started making new Micro Machines, like the actual physical toys, which, if that's true, I gotta figure out how to get in on that. Um, some days I wish I didn't remember people. I, I know all the wrong people, maybe. Um, uh, but, uh, da, 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 da. what is it? There's two pretty good ones uh there's toy box turbos which are which feels very much like you know micro machine games as you remember them where it's like hey it's small you want a map that is uh you're on a kitchen table or you're on a school kid's desk you're using rulers as um you're using rulers as bridges. You're hitting a Cheerio and getting flung into the air. That's the game you want to check out. Um, but the other one, and I'm going to look this up because I haven't played it in a while. I want to say it's called like, let me just search real quick. Am I, it's called like mini, mini motor racing X. Um, and it is, it is not so much in the like, toy box scale end of these kind of games but it's got the like uh, super chibi car design the default cameras are uh, super uh, uh, zoomed out so it looks like you're 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 playing in a diorama rather than on a, a real racetrack um, but it's got a ton of cards it's got a ton of tracks it's got online um, you can play it from like a, a like a regular racing game perspective, if you want to feel like a regular racing game, but you can also uh, play from that pulled out perspective. And the great thing about both of these games is they got VR support. Um, and between those, uh, mini, the Mini Motor Racing X in VR is amazing because it's got, like, it, it feels the way you want it to feel in that you the default camera is you are sitting here 
and the track is just there at your feet and you feel like you're playing with slot car racers or something and it's just right it's also pretty smart because like it has like different like camera points around the map but not only are they different locations but they are different scales so like the the default one is like you know you're in the clouds looking down at the track but then it's like okay but now uh the one in the stands and then you're sitting in the stands at like actual like like normal scale and you're watching these full size cars go by or there's one that's like okay put me on top of the skyscraper over here and then it's like you f you're still looking down on the track but you don't feel like you're this giant you know you don't feel like a giant god you just feel like you're standing on a skyscraper and that's why you have this great overhead view of the track it's really well made i am i am shocked um speaking of well made Bag one appears to be done. And yes, we did exactly what I thought we were going to do. We put um, the pegs on top. Uh, what are these called? Pin on bottom. Connected to the four corners. Welcome we put this just like this simple barrel this on it. And then the tire goes on the barrel. And the tire actually home. sticks out further than the barrel. So these are just rubber feet. Like... That's got that's got good friction on it. That's that's really good. I am I am psyched. I, all I did was build like a little bucket here, and I'm already super psyched about it. Okay. Hmm. Excuse me. No, oh, no, I'm broken. Okay. So now it says set this aside. Good. That'll go right there out of. Hello. It'll be sitting right there out of camera range. Oh, why am I like this? Especially tonight. It says move on to bag two. I'm doing it proper tonight. I have tools. I have a very particular set of tools. Actually, I do. Somewhere, somewhere within arm's reach. I'm not sure where, but within arm's reach, I have Torx head bits for screwdrivers. Um... I, I feel like it's like, oh, hey, realizing that I have a screwdriver in the junk drawer is like step one of becoming the kind of person who who opens things up and messes around. Somewhere around like step three or four is buying Torx bits, and then that's not too far away from buying a, a soldering iron. The one teal piece in this bag. Okay. Here, there, here, there, here, there. Good. Okay, what piece is that? That's the. Okay, that's. It's this size and color, but it's smooth. But it's not that smooth. It is that smooth. Or is it just this piece? And the printed color and the actual color look too different. Can you show me where these darker colors are so I can compare? Them? Yes, that that is actually the lighter brown printed. Okay, well, okay. Benefit of the doubt. Let's go. These go adjacent to this. What step was I on? I'm up there. This is going to be a lap, it is. Okay, and then we have this L that's going to hold it down. Sometimes you hold the L. Sometimes the L holds you. This is this case is the ladder. Okay, another one of these hooky feet. I'm going to go here. And then a wrench. Okay, it's not a wrench. It's um. It's a it's a one of these very similar to like the minifig wrench tool piece but it is just sort of a, a pip with a peg hanging off of it <clears throat> right it's like the most steps we've had on pay so far cool i will say 
See, I don't know if they've done this for an ease of building reason or for like a, a sort of like visual complexity reason, but I'm pretty sure when they're giving us pieces of close colors like this, right? Like our 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 dark browns and our light browns like this, right? Like like we we can tell them apart looking at them. Uh, they're close, but we can tell them apart. Uh, whereas, like, in the book, the ink quality is just rough. I'm pretty sure what they've done here is they've made it so that no one piece appears in both colors. So that way, if you see a piece, even if you have trouble telling apart what colors it are, is that how that sentence goes? What is having trouble telling apart what colors it are? No, because it could be multiples. Are we talking about multiple feet? Don't worry about it. Yeah, no, that's close enough. Yeah. Okay, I'll say close enough. <laughs> um, but basically, like, like even even if you have trouble telling exactly which color it, it's supposed to be in the book. You can tell by the shape because there's only one color that close. Like, like I don't know. Maybe it's like because like I bet we could find this color piece in like a shade in like gray or blue. But I bet you will it will not give us another one of these in a different shade of brown. In all the shades of brown, this is the only shade that they will give this to us in. Um, I don't have any authority when I say that. I just think that's what's going on because that is a very smart thing to do. And, you know, it's it's funny. I've, uh, we have a, uh, we do Christmas around here. And for Christmas, we have a train set that we have set up uh, since I was a little one. Um, Actually, I think the the train set we used came out like the year before I was born, so it's about as old as me. So it's 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 getting back there, and like I had to rebuild parts of it this year, and rebuilding it and seeing the old instructions, um, or like the old style of instruction from that era versus the instructions you get with a kit now is like you can see the way that they've gotten smarter about things. But at the same time, the real secret is, is that the kits, the kits that do smart things, like give you this clear color separation on parts that will not be visible from the outside. This is not uh, necessarily something that comes with modern kits. This is something that comes with expensive kits. Modern, if, if you get cheap kits, we're talking like, basically sub $25 kits uh, these days. Um, they are, they do not care about giving you things that are hard to read or tell apart. Um, and it used to be that the expensive kits might have that same problem because they only had so many parts. They weren't, you know, I'm sure they did not have as large of a design team as they have now. Um, but just this, the, for me, it was kind of hilarious to, uh, just put together like oh it's not just they've gotten smarter over time it's that they they put in more money for uh <laughs> they, put, they put in more money for uh what do you call it they put in more effort for the kids that are going to get them more money and it's just like well we do live in a capitalist hellscape so i can't say i'm surprised Here's a secret for those of you uh, watching the archive or who have like a Prime subscription. Uh, I added new buttons to my OBS that now allow me to keep track of like when ads are going to autoplay. Um, and speaking of capitalist hellscapes, I just started a two minute. Shh. Don't. 
Don't tell the pores when they get back. No, don't. Don't demonize poverty. That's my message. We live in a hellscape. Make things better where you are able. That's my message. That's my brand. I'm trying to make that my brand. That being said, I am going to wait another minute before I start any major topics. So excuse me if this is a bit quiet here. Now you might be able to tell in the future uh, if I go quiet for no apparent reason for about two minutes. Uh, it's because I'm running an ad and trying to save any good stuff for uh, when people are actually here. What is that piece? What is that piece? What is this piece? Okay, no, wait, I know what this piece is. No, not that piece. This piece. Oh, wait, no, okay. I think I've seen a piece like this before. So it's pips on top and a bar on back. I think I've probably seen these as, like, armor plates on medieval kits or something like that. Like, like you stick it to the front of your ballista in a row and then... Da -da 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 -da. Um... But it actually wants me to do this backwards here. And we're going to mount these on the pip side. So that way we can use the bar to connect them. Oh, so that way we can use the bar to connect them to these hooks that we placed earlier. And then it really works because on each of them, they're offset by one plate height. So this is this is even. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I love. I love nonsense like that. I love getting. I love being given a perfect square grid and then just making angles work on it. Just I imagine just out of spite of math, you know. Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Okay. I need to move this closer so I can see what it is you're telling me to do. Okay. This piece. This piece here. But yeah, okay, so uh, I, was, I was looking at this piece and this was throwing me off. It's just like, okay, it's this. And you look at the bottom and it's like, whoa, it's got this weird T piece. Um, and it's actually not that weird, because what it is is, is is, um, let's see here. Hey, I have a special tool for getting pieces off. That's not going to work here, because this is so well uh, designed and assembled that I can't get in there. Here we go. Oops. So if you look at this piece that we had before, the sort of like two plate high curved edge step down kind of thing um oh can i get this straight up on my palm nope uh these pieces are just this but with those lowered front corners um angled to 45 Welcome so this is not like here yeah, you can you can see the profile is um, let's see if i can do it this way but like the the profile on these pieces is exactly the same because it's only the one I can't I can't hold wait I could do it like this um there you go so like that profile is basically identical because they've only sort of sheared it in in this facing anyway I'm sorry I was proud of myself for figuring it out it's good to have a moment where you're proud of yourself it's healthy if you have the chance, I will heartedly recommend it. Uh, this piece over here. This, the rare four long slope. A long boy. Sometimes you find a long boy. Get a long little doggy. A dashed hund. Okay, assuming this piece has to be this piece because it's the only one I got that even looks kind of like that. And then you want me to use 
these slopey bits to sort of I've, I've always had a problem with, with slopey bits like these because like they don't sit flat they sit on an angle you really got to account for them if you do them in order like this it's they don't smooth into each other and I've always been like ah these are too much trouble to use but when we're making you know wood bark something very organic like this that the, the sort of mismatching of that conformity really plays to the advantage also like like i was saying the um the when you when you look at this piece this is what i mean about like the 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 visual complexity element of the two different shades and like certain pieces only come in certain shades like it helps to like find them in your pile of pieces but also when we get to this point it looks like you know it looks like it's adding depth to to the model like it actually looks a bit more like a real um oh wow and this place is down here this is on the base not on the piece we attached there we go but like now now we're seeing that sort of like visual noise that we would expect to see on a real tree of like whether it's because like light and shading or because you know uh younger pieces are brighter and like older pieces are, are dying and are, are, are darker or, or what have you but like that looks really good like you would think it would look bad because it's like oh pieces are different colors they don't match but like no they look good it, it looks natural it's really good to have in a uh, a set where we're trying to recreate the natural world Okay, and then we have to build basically the other, the, the, the mirror of the piece we just did. Or is that it? Well, I think that's it. Well, then it looks like a very complex piece, but it's not actually that complex. And looks pretty fully mirrored. And mirror the placement. And there we go. I wouldn't say it looks like a tree yet. It looks like a transformer mid transform if uh he had a humanoid form and a quarter pipe form but I ain't complaining oh we're doing it again oh yeah look at this okay so the beautiful for me these were always rare to find but the, the beautiful hinges uh we're gonna take three of these and we're going to do forbidden forbidden lego techniques um Because we are going to uh, stretch them out to arrange them and make a triangle. So again, just really, just really spit in the face of grid-based systems. <laughs> like this is part of why any hinge-based, um, or like any set with hinges in it, became so so valuable. Because um, to, to my mind, they were always rare. Maybe I was just, you know, not getting the sets that lean on them. Oh, look at that. Look look at that. Spitting in the face of the god, the orthogonal god. Oh, I love it. I love it. And that's, a, so that's now like a solid piece. That will not move. Oh, I am so psyched. This is a good kit. Again, I don't care if it's weird that these are the things I get excited about. Uh, I, I cannot deny my truth. I'm psyched about this. We're going to put the cross holes or the, the holes for cross pins on these sides. We're going to do another one or is it? Nope. This side is going to build. I get here. Yeah, I can probably put this back up here. No, I can't. These browns are still too dark to see on the page. I need it close by. Let's see here. We need 
this which like okay we're already talking about arcs and weird step down pieces i don't think i've ever seen this one like it's kind of like the upper part of an arch but like it ain't uh even arch it's that's some weird 3x squared plus kind of arching going on oh and i have two of these on my tray i do Ooh. okay so we're gonna take these and we have another one of these and this is gonna hook these together to start and this plate oh i jumped the gun not all three parts get the discs on the bottom i made an assumption that was my mistake because this now sits flat on the top of this little pedestal we made. So it's going to stay one angular piece, but now we're going to have this extra disc to use somewhere else. You want us to top these with these little coat hanger pieces. Do you... Y'all ever had... Hey, throw it in the chat or in the comments uh, pieces that y'all had like family names for when when working with levels levels legos because like I, I i look at this little dude and i'm always just like mm, yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a coat hanger piece like you would you would stick it on the wall and then the peg hangs out and you hang your coat on that a key rack piece something like that never use them that often but I was young. I didn't have keys either. Okay, and now this falls here. It's going to give us some pips on this direction to work with. Sevens it out and extra connects those two together. God, and now we're putting this to get even more pips on this side of it. So again, generally speaking, this way is up. So now we have these not just pips, they're studs. That's what they... the. That's what the brand Bible says. Because this we're now far into snot territory. That stud's not on top. I'm sure I've talked about this on previous Lego build nights. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this third coat rack piece is going to go here facing in. And that is going to put a peg right in the middle of our triplet. That's good spacing. I am I am impressed by that. That is so wonderfully symmetrical. Oh my god, I can't even tell you how happy that makes me. Okay, and now more hinges to sort of I'm assuming cap off this module. You'll see hinges. You're a hinge. There you go. Oh, building a hinge, are you? A knife. Well done, Trent. Uh, right, and it comes out from this asymmetric one in there. And we're going to have these, which now step off, step up, step down, maybe step down. Finish that off nice and smooth. Excellent. And... Hey, that disc we didn't use before. Now we're using it. Oh, and it's actually connecting the um, the tip of the hinges to this step up uh, 90 degree piece. Yeah, it's a solid piece. Did I do it right? Yeah, that's right. And... Oh, I didn't even notice. I have a chocolate frog. I got, wait, I have a, I have, I have a thing from moments like these. I got a chocolate frog. It's not even Easter. It's not even, um, canceled Wizard Works World branded. You know the one I mean. Um, okay, 
so this one goes here got this step up piece leading up to it other side is better. then we come down here and we're going to oh wait yeah see it's hard to see the... I got this book right in front of me and it's hard to see did I do something wrong welcome to Newgrounds Radio Visit us at www.newgrounds.com. Because this is saying I should have... Oh, wait. No, here it is. My eyes just don't work. It's fine. So we're putting another cross peg block there. And then on this side, it is... This... And then the one with the clip, and then we're clipping in this wiggle woggle. Let me just clip it in at the right angle. Try to. There we go. There you go. Now we got some serious greeting. I called it a chocolate frog, and now this is like a very milk chocolate brown, and now I just want chocolate. I've hurt myself. Oh, and that's it. And now this all goes. God, that seems dangerous. So. This is all going to rest on these two. There's no way we're leaving it like that. That is not going to be strong enough to support. I'm worried that's barely strong enough to support this. Although now it does have an excellent swoopy tree look to it. Um, but yeah, no, we're definitely going to have to, like, build along this and add the support that way to, to keep those connected. Wait, 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 what? Wait, when did we do that? When did we do that? Wait, when did we do that? I missed a step somewhere? Would have had to do that. Oh, okay. So when we were putting this black piece, the 90 degree piece in, it was supposed to have... These and the disc on it. And looking at it, that now does pretty much bring up right into line with these pieces that we just added on. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, okay, luckily didn't have to take anything apart to fix that. And now it also says we're going to take this. I assume this has to go down. And the other long wedge and that's going to go down too and yeah that hangs just barely off where that's going to connect so it's, it's sitting fully on that round plate and that was a big piece looks wow it we didn't mean to make a horse's head can we have like a a little bit of mane maybe a little bit of new hampshire if we can't get any mane It's kind of a horse. Maybe a sick one. Okay. All right. Put that aside. And quick look at this. We are, whoops. We are about to build the piece that is going to bridge those because we take this and we take this and this oh and then we have to leave that space for the um the one that's taller up here that's absolutely what we're doing there uh this one this goes on the edge yep it's gonna slot right in there so we know exactly where to put it you want me to put this 
here. And then this big boy up here. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Oh, and then this one needs to be raised up to fit with these there. Okay. Before I just go sticking it on. Yes, there's one more step where we put this last long boy. I did not even see we had three of the long boys on. I only saw the one that each step called me for. That's weird. And this is going to go there. And now this goes right on goes right goes right on okay grabbed all of the ones up there all of the ones down here now that is a solid piece now that has i mean they're long look at them the 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 standard wedges of the like one by three slope block category is they're one by three this one's one by four you'll see like one by twos which look like kid sneakers um but these are these are like the SSR variant, the long boys. I think I've seen them in like, I think I've seen sixes before. How, how many, how many S's can you put before R, uh, before R to, um, yo, hang on. This next page has trivia about a specific part. Uh, this part it seems to be talking about this is one of the first times this particular element has been used in a Lego register trademark set in a reddish brown color wow what colors have they come in before I mean they look like pipes so I figured they would be you would see them in like gray. Maybe you could get them in black. But yeah, no, using them as like, it's like these massive tree trunks. Totally. Right, so we put a short peg into one end of three of these. And then, so we make three, but we're only going to attach two. What? And it looks like this one goes here. And this one goes here into those cross peg blocks that we placed into this trunk. Well, actually, if this is the majority of the trunk, this thing is going to be. Right. And this is the special round base piece that does clip into this. Which, if it wasn't for these pegs that we put in, this thing would spin around in the base. That'd be hilarious. Um, but yeah, th this will clip right into here. These pegs will keep it locked in a specific orientation. Um, yeah, no, that seems like the main height of the trunk of it. Okay, that's... I guess... Bigger and smaller than I expected? Man, mainly smaller than I expected. You know what? I have so much stuff in this house. If something I like is also small, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. I, d I don't need my my Legos to... Oh, wow. There's a whole nother one I could not see printed on the page. This one also goes here, and it goes there. Okay. Um, I do not need my, my Legos to be um, accommodating. What's the word that you say about dudes in their trucks? Compensating. I don't need my Legos to be compensating for anything. Thank you. Sorry, my Lego kits. There's no such thing as Legos. Also notice, like, he here's the thing. I love that they, um... I love that, that they are... Like, sort of editorializing and giving us, like, fun facts. Being, like, almost conversational about it. Because... I love when something is trying to be conversational, but it comes from a brand. So it has to stay on a brand book. So... That's where you get that every it's like because like we'll say a Lego piece, they will say an element. These are not this is not a bag of pieces. This every every Lego branded set is made up of individual elements. Like your lawyers must love you right now. That's 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 who you are making happy by speaking that way. 
Um, okay, so we did that. Now we're going to use these. By the way, um, <clears throat> it's the first time these Lego registered trademark qu single quotes vine elements have appeared in a reddish brown color. Wow. I wonder. It's like, it's also, is that also like a brand Bible kind of thing that each element also has a, like a descriptor name, which, and then descriptor names are put single quotes, lowercase. Huh. Ooh. Okay. All right. So where did the, I cannot see this book. Okay, so they go around the back here. They start on these key hooks that we put on the trunk. And then they're going to like kind of twist together, it looks like. And they come to rest on... It's this not a wrench that we placed on the base. Get on there. Get on there. Yeah. You, know, you know what? Maybe that means I should let the longer one attach first because it's going to want to bend down more to get underneath. This one will pull it straight. These don't really want to like sit here very well. They don't feel secure. That that is a great, very natural, organic. You don't see that in Lego. Like like even the rest of this, you can definitely see like okay, well you know, the edges on these are perfectly aligned, even though they're curved. You know you can still see how all of the pieces are cut on grids even though they are broken up by like the color and and the, the what have you like it's got a lot of texture in terms of color in terms of smooth versus versus studded versus you know what what have you but you can see everything is very like still like it has like its own internal gridding and you're just seeing how those grids have been sliced up these 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 are just super soft wiggly boy and you just put them here and you put them there and yep they are they're just going to do whatever they're going to do. And that looks super, super organic. That's the thing about organisms. They love to do whatever it is they're going to do, Mr. Anderson. Hey, did you watch that new um, Matrix yet? Also, hey, did you also watch uh, all three Matrixes back to back before watching the new one? Um, turns out I like the Matrix a whole lot. <laughs> Man, I know I was talking about them on a stream at some point. I forget which one, um, but that first movie is just good cinema. Okay, so you want this piece to hold on to this piece, and then we're going to stick it on this other pin that we put at the top. Just make a really wiggly root. That actually, that looks good. And then on the back. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. This one on the back is just going to slide into this one. So that was a, 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 a single, a one by one brick but with a stud on the side. And the thing about that is the side studs are always open. So now we just Welcome put the egg in the Visit side stud and there we go. And the final com. step here, I believe this is actually perfectly symmetrical along this axis. So it doesn't matter if I put it this way or this way. Um, so I'm just gonna do it the way that it looks to me in the book. Which is, we're just gonna snap that onto that plate in the middle, easy, no problem. 
slide that around until it, it sits in the bounds and not on top of the side. That is sitting in here. We can actually fold this. Wait, can we fold this back a little more? You know what? It's very happy to be sitting where it's sitting. So maybe, I don't know, that, okay, now I feel happy about where it's sitting. And it does, so. See, I'm still not quite sure if these are supposed to be, like, vertically waggling. It could go either way. Uh, okay, this page came out. Whoops. Wow, what a crazy... Okay, first of all, first of all, to see in a Lego step, to see in a Lego set instructions, what a crazy step it is asking us to do right here. Second of all, look at the freaking way that they have tried to describe in like symbology what this step is. Hey, open bag three, take all of the, the sub bags of bag three and empty them all into the large bag of bag three. Then shake that bag up. Then just put them in there. Is this a single step? Yes, this is a single step. Like, like that's the thing. This is such a weird, like, this is instructions, but it is so, it is so weirdly, like, 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 it is, it is such a weird thing for a set of instructions to ask you to do. It's almost like they don't know how to think about it. So, even though this is like a whole step on its own, this is could be a series of steps. The only step is put them all in here. This is like it's not even doing the um the what do you call it? Because like we've seen when they'll do something like this, where they'll say like, "Hey, here's the sub here's the sub steps, and then here's what the like main step is." So you you could make the argument that the like assemble them, sh dump them all into one bag, and shake it are two steps of the sub step. And then this is the main step, but it is not using that sort of like flowchart iconography for this. They were just like, I don't know. We're asking you to do a weird thing. Just play. Just l listen. We'll give you these pictures as a hint, but you're kind of on your own because this is weird for us too. That's what this is saying to me. And I am in love with it. I am in love with the like awkwardness you can feel from the, the way the instructions are shown. It's great. All right, you know what? Let's do a little bit of that. Where did I put that back? And this is also just going to be a nightmare for microphone concepts. If you're on a uh, if you're on a headphone user, maybe take a break for about a minute forty. Yes, that is a very specific time. Uh, don't worry about it. Oh, wait. There's only one sub bag in here anyway. Okay, well. Ugh. But I, I went to just, like, move it without really picking it up. I'm like, no, it those rubber tires grab the tray really well. Wow. Okay. I don't I don't as a habit watch MRE videos but this feels like a part of that that, that sort of like ultra efficiency the packaging is actually one of the tools I love that don't get me wrong I love to see that that's like a uh, engineering feat that that I admire but all right again if you're using headphones take them off now I wish I could do that but here we go Uh, 
that look thoroughly mixed, maybe. Uh, and now we just take our chicken, we dredge it in the egg, and uh, then we dip it in here and just right on a tray, right in the oven, about 25 minutes at 350, and that'll be a tasty dinner. I had dinner. It does look like trail. Well, I mean, it looks like trail mix, but like it is the colors of the trail. It's just like, okay, we have some, some like fallen seeds and some grass and some mud and. All right. And now I guess we just. This feels like opulent. The idea of like, it's like, no, no, no. We're using these pieces in just their like, we're using the fact that there's a lot of them and we're small and we can, and we can make a mess with them. It, it feels like opulent. It feels like, it's like, no, no, no. If, if we were on a budget, we would have to be like, all right, let's figure out where we should place these, what kind, what stuff, you know, like, like the way that we've done the, I can't tilt this anymore. That's the biggest problem. Like the way that we've done the rest of this about like, okay, where do we place, you know, which specific ones and which angles and where do we put the long boys and, and where do we put all these things just so, so that way we are designing like a messy look to it an organic look to it. Um, and that's like, okay. And then we know, exactly how many pieces we need, uh, exactly what we can do. We can sort of optimize the, the placement. Maybe we can sort of like keep the feelings that we're getting by doing that, but use fewer pieces, something like that. This one's just like, nah, just, just throw more plates at the problem. Just dump them in. It'll, it'll sort itself out. Whatever you get, that'll be right. Oh, it feels, I am so, these are also the easiest. Cause like these are, so these are the, 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 the flatty flat ones, right? Like they got the hole on the bottom to, to sit on a stud and they are smooth on top. And this is like, is there a Lego piece that actually contains less plastic than this? Like just by like, by like mass or whatever. Maybe the one where it's like this but it's, I think they, they, they'll do one where it's like a square plate, but it cut into a triangle that might have less mass. The point is some of the, the most like scientifically easy to lose forever between the seats of a couch or under a table or between a dresser and a wall, like scientifically the ones that are most losable pieces the ones that we are leaving loose these are not connected these are just loose in here this see 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 i thought this was going to be a beautiful thing to look at but no it is it is like a uh this is this is an art project about anxiety now oh my god oh i was not prepared for that i i like i said I, i've had this box like sitting near me because I, I knew I was going to do it on stream eventually. So it's been like floating around me for months now. I never noticed that you just pour in this, this trail mix gravel as a step of this. And I'm just like, I'm just worried now. I am so scared to touch and move this. That's why it's a bonsai tree. It's, it's partly about meditation. That's why meditation and calmness is important because if you sort of like get shaky with your hand, even once they're all gone. They're gone. They're just gone. They will disappear. They will live in a new dimension thereafter. They will, they will go full on sliders and leave this dimension and forever be hopping dimensions looking for their way back home. Didn't sliders pull that? There was one episode where they got back to their home dimension, but there was something like, like, oh no, but the person in this other dimension is actually still in trouble. We should go help them. And you're just like, oh, of course you would do this. You know, just to have the heartbreak of it. I would rather sliders have been able to go home at any time, but like. 
they chose to keep going back out to, to help the people in the other dimensions. That's the Stargate. I'm basically thinking of Stargate, I think is what I'm thinking of. And that's good since Sliders was basically like group uh, Quantum Leap anyway, I think. Should I just do a bonus like Saturday morning stream where we watch a couple of uh, like an, an episode of MacGyver and an episode of Texas Ranger or something? Okay, so we're going to build all of these. This appears to be a fork in the instructions to being like, hey, which which part do you want to work on next? Um, do you want the A, the B, or the C? Except this isn't really a C, and I do want this in which of ever of the other two cases. So I'm, I'm going to break with tradition of just going through the book. I guess that's a tradition. Um, I really want to to make this this tray. I really like the look of it. I like, I like wood frames that just. I like slats. I don't know. When you're out of slats, you're out of pier. My producer laughed. She gets it. Correction. Unfortunately, she gets it. Um. Let's do this because this will be nice. This will uh, be an included part of this, no matter which leads we go with. See, okay. If I were designing this set, this base here would secretly also be the storage tray to hold whichever leaves you don't have currently on the tree. Whether that's just by like having a, a door that opens or by having like very carefully secretly placed studs like on the underside that you just connect them to, you know, using the same like connection points that you would use for the top. Um, but I'm also somebody who is definitely on the, the sort of like and user side of these things and know what it's like to have all of these in the loop constantly. Okay, what size is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, five, ten. Okay. This. And we are making two of whatever this is, so I should double my steps. So two tens. Then, yes, the other parts we need for this step are in the tiny bag. Okay. Okay, so it's going to hang off like... Yes, because these are three, four, so that's a total of 12, and we're putting it on a 10, which means that it'll be two longer, and it's going to hang off one on each side. How did I really get that wrong? <laughs> Wait, okay. No, no, I was right. I was just wrong. Possible to be both. I guess. Right? Mirrored, mirrored. And now... Oh, okay, and then just... Ex extend the 10s into 12s? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, and you see, this is where my skeptic... Skeptic? Cynic brain. Ooh, this might be cynic brain. Uh, starts to ask, hey, is a 10 and two twos cheaper than a 12? Is that why it, it's it's designed this way? Ah, I swear I'm going to stay. And then... We put a brick on it, and it's going to be too short on each side. Is that this one? That's this one. And double. Okay. 
of these weird... You ever look at these pieces and it's like, oh, how come this brick looks like barrels? You're gonna build a wood cabin, I guess. Okay, so this takes the last one. But we're gonna do that twice? But then we're gonna do it twice, twice. Hey, this is twice, twice Bryce. He's Tony two times cousin. So this is going to be the same color. So I have to assume that that means this is also the 10. Yeah, because these are... Yeah, these are the only ones even close to this length here. So I think I'm safe to just assume that these are the pieces. Doesn't mean I am, but I'm charging ahead anyway, because... Again, I'm excited to work on this kit. I'm more excited to have this kit done. And the idea that there are... Like... When you have steps, like, three chapters in a row would be easy, because, you know, chapter you do chapter one... And then you see how chapter two builds on chapter one and wouldn't be possible without it. And then chapter three is the same way with chapter two, which is the same way with chapter one. Um, and, you know, you feel like you're you're progressing this one because it's like, no, these are like three separate steps. that have nothing to do with each other. You can do them in whatever order. It's just like, oh, OK, so now it's going to feel like I'm doing three steps instead of, you know, progressing on one big thing. Um, and that. I don't know. I don't know if that's just for me. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but that's that always makes it harder for me because I feel like okay, well, now I feel like I'm I'm just not like I'm I'm wasting my time, but like it just feels like more effort knowing that like they are going to each have separate start and ends, and not they're going to build off of each other to create something bigger. It's just like now I'm just doing three things instead of doing one big interesting thing. Um, by the way, this is basically my main complaint with, um, the, oh, what was that 3DS Zelda game, A Link Between Worlds? The one where, uh, it was just like, hey, this is just a big, uh, you can do the dungeons in any order. And everybody's like, cool. Um, that was my big argument against that game is that exact same thing of just like, oh, because these things are all like, none of them require any of the others. And that means that they all feel like they're separate, which means that like seeing them all together feels like more work than seeing them all as part of like a, a journey where things build on each other. Basically, basically the same argument. These Legos, that game. Um, they fixed it for Breath of the Wild, but I think in this weird way of, like, Breath of the Wild, like, Breath of the Wild still had a good sense of mystery when you found, uh, your sort of, like, out of, out of order, non-building kind of thing, because at some point you were building, like, your, your, like supplies like you were just like it's like oh, okay over here i'm like i don't need to have the armor to get the sword but once i do the armor and once i do the sword i will have the armor and the sword and having that will both help me fight the final boss so you are like none of none of the things you're getting are prerequisites for each other but you are like gaining them over time and they are all going to help you in the final battle and even then the final battle you was like self-paced like saying like yeah you can go fight the final boss right now um is interesting because like yeah you could you probably won't but it is saying like hey there's a lot of stuff out here and by some by some measure all of it is optional um but but because all of it is optional do as much as you feel like you want to, and when it stops being fun, uh, go finish the game. It, it gave you, it, it did this really uh, sort of like compromise of like, yeah, we don't really like 
have a set progression to these things. But also, it's not a big checklist. Here, here, you you have the ability to self-pace yourself, and you know, the game, much like her story, uh, the um, uh, uh, much like her story, Breath of the Wild is able to say, uh, the game ends when you are satisfied, not before, not after. <laughs> um. It's such a weird comparison to make. Oh, and yet I'm kind of proud of it. Oh, be proud of the weird. Embrace cringe. That's my advice to you on this day. God, well, because there was a thing in Link Between Worlds. That so much of uh between worlds the flattening of link whatever it was called um that game to me that game was so forgettable because like because because of that exact thing like you did not have these um and then just they're symmetrical so you can connect them together fun it's a I don't know if you needed to have us build that as two symmetrical parts. I feel like we've, you know, even at the beginning of this building that I can't, I'm so scared to move this again. When we were building this, this sort of outline base around here, we built it as like one thing all the way around. Like I, I know, I know this is a much bigger frame, uh, but I don't think it's more complex. Uh, what was I going to say? Forgettable. Me. Utterly forgettable. You. No, that's no. Four, four of these. Oh, is this going to be exactly half? Yes, that's that's exactly half. Is why you need four of them. So we're just going to line the inside. Great. Something something happened with my tray. No, no it's, it's because when I pull it up towards me, I am pulling it like 90 degrees across the camera. So towards me, like when I'm looking at it, it goes from my eye to the tray. It's on a straight line between it, but I've pulled it out of the eye line of the camera. I need to put a third camera, sort of like exactly nine, like ninety degree offset from both of these, facing out exactly this axis, for no particular reason. Um, yeah, if I if I put my elbow on the table. If the table squeaks, then the insane thing. Why did we put these barely ones in here if they're going to be like completely covered? Unless that is a way to like, you know, a, a, a visual helping. Cause it's like, oh no, this four piece stands apart. Then it's the four piece with the side pegs. And then it's the big sixes that connect it. Hmm. Link Between Worlds. What do I remember about that game? Uh, Coward Link. I like that character. Um, but I also just like rabbit characters, so maybe that's cheating. Um, you get a Goth Zelda. That's cool. That's cool. A lot of fans of that out there, I know. Um... I hate these little dudes. Oh my gosh. Alright, well. I signed up for tedium. Uh, and good. If I have to do something tedious and then talking about video games will help pass the time for sure. Uh, the whole thing was the item rentals. Like, it was like that was the whole. To, to me, that was like one of the things that made Link to the Past feel like this grand adventure is like. Everywhere you went, every dungeon you did, every dungeon you did, like, yes, you defeated a boss and that was cool, but you also walked away with a new item. And over time, like, you know, I, I when I'm doing Doom streams, I'm talking about uh, your power curve. It's just like, oh, how, how much stronger are you getting compared to how much stronger are the enemies getting? Um, and that's the weird thing about, like, a... a 
uh, Metro Zeldavania is that it's not necessarily about like linear strength of like hey now my missiles now i have missiles that are twice as or like six times as strong as a blaster or whatever it's not about that so much as it's about um now i have the morph ball now i can get into little spaces like like you are not just um strengthening but you're actually gaining new tools not just improved tools and And like to, to me, that's part of the thing that that makes it such an adventure. Like over the course of those games, you you look and you go like, oh, hey, now now I have this. And I think that's that's like I don't know if I'm picky or if I'm just very sensitive in in, in how I notice these things. But like in in a Metroid game, I, I never really feel it. But in a Zelda game, it always works super well for me, even though from a certain via certain descriptors they are doing the exact same thing which is just like it's like okay there's an op there's an obstacle that you do not have the tool to surpass and then you know as you progress in the direction uh where you can handle the obstacles you will gain the tools to handle the other obstacles and even though you know you're exploring the same space over and over you are like sort of linearly going through eh, mostly linearly and you can do some crazy skips in metroid because like some tools have you know very careful use of certain tools will allow them to act in place of other tools but that's that's a whole different conversation i am i am not prepared this evening to have that conversation um but i always felt like there is that concept of tool upgrading versus new tool so like so like in 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 a metroid right i haven't played enough to know like general upgrade paths but it's like okay you have the blaster and then you have missiles and then you have ice blaster and then you have wave blaster right that's is that, is that sound right um but you look at it and that's like okay uh deal damage and open doors deal more damage and open more doors deal more damage to specific enemies and open more doors deal damage to more specific enemies and open more doors like like you're yes you are finding these things but essentially they are upgrading where you know you get you get the same upgrade five times that sort of does do that same thing of expanding your world and the amount of the world that you were able to navigate, but it doesn't expand your abilities. You you are not you it is not expanding your tool bag where and there are things in Metroid that do it, but like but like I can't really think of much in uh how do I want to compare this? Uh, okay, so so like as somebody who plays a lot of Doom, I look at it and go, oh, that's Doom, right? Because it, it's, especially in the new Doom, they made this really obvious, but it's like you, you look at your ammo types and it's like, okay, I have the pistol and then I have the chain gun and then I can upgrade the chain gun and these are all my bullet weapons. And like when, once you get the chain gun, you never use the pistol. Once you get the, the, it doesn't happen so often in Doom, um, but there's this idea of like, it's like, yeah, no, once once you get the wave beam, you're never really using the original blaster again because it's just, like, better in every way, right? Um, so you're not expanding your tool bag. You are replacing tools is, is what you're doing. And sort of, like, the breadth of the tools available to you stays even. Whereas I think of, of you know, Zelda games. I almost called them Link games because you do play as Link. Let's be real. You play as Link. <laughs> Famous joke of internet you play as link um did i miss a step no we do that we do that and now we just go across great i love to i love to create slats um when i think of zelda and i think about 
the tools the tools and abilities that you get during the course of the game i can't think of much that replaces others right like okay maybe eventually you get a flame rod and that would replace a lantern does it even um but like a boomerang doesn't really replace a uh a boomerang doesn't replace a bomb a bomb doesn't replace a lantern a lantern doesn't replace a, just a sword a sword doesn't replace the pegasus boots you know like like it feels like everything that you find in a zelda game is uh is a unique tool and adds to to your toolkit and so you know at the start of the game you're like okay i can do about three things and at the end of the game you if you start with three things and you find 12 things and at the end of the game you can do 15 things whereas in something like a metroid i wish you like okay you start with two things and you find 13 things and you end with only six tools and it's just like wait like i i, I don't like th th so again you know on, on a stream like this, this is the first time i'm really like consciously putting descriptors like this to to these words um to these thoughts but like that is kind of the thing about it that that's that's why i i think that's you know a lot of times when i'm complaining about metroid games i i say the that there's a lot of of them that feels like busy work and that's kind of uh i think that maybe you know is is in that same kind of direction where it's just like yeah no you're gonna like get upgrades or you're gonna get upgrades you're not gonna get tools and the thing that i like is tools that infinitely not infinitely but just like like keep showing me new things i will say that like in different zelda games you will see different tools that do the same thing because it's like oh in this game uh in this game you're not going to get the boomerang but you're going to get the hook shot and and those can you know the, the one of those the hook shot is probably an upgrade to a boomerang um but i also feel like there is sort of a like knowing brevity when they do that where like okay if, if we're going to have the hook shot in this game maybe we're not going to have the boomerang or maybe the boomerang will behave differently and it'll it'll you know serve a different purpose or like maybe the hookshot doesn't get this in this one or like you, you know like they they give them unique oh that actually that is so simple it, it's just like a deck for your yard but i love the way this looks the the little the offset spacing every other one is half a space apart to leave the open slats i just love the look of that some days i think maybe i should become a private eye not because um i feel like serving justice just because i love venetian blinds so much like really love venetian blinds you can you can tell Ugh. um but like a, a zelda game i feel like And it kind of ends up being fun because when they are going to be like, oh, here's the tool we would normally use in this case, but we want to we want to like introduce something different. What they'll do is they will just sort of give you the tool that replaces it. And that's just the one that you have in this game. You know, it's just like, OK, what's like, all right, th this game, we're not going to give you the running boots, but we are going to give you this other interesting traversal item that's going to do pretty much the same thing um it's, it's going to serve the purpose that this normally would have maybe something else about it maybe it, it looks different maybe it's just there's just sort of like a novelty to that they just go like oh okay this is basically this but whoa it's different and that's you know a little bit of novelty goes a long way uh, especially when when you're you know and, and I, I think that's part of it because like that's that that same principle applies to to uh getting a new tool as opposed to upgrading a tool a little bit of novelty goes a long way it's just like oh this thing that is just a better version of a thing i've done before okay 
wait, is one of these feet broken or something? Or just... No, I'm pretty sure it just looks weird. Okay, so it's saying these are going to go like, on the inside like this. I'm going to go out of my way to ignore the specifics it gives me. Because judging by the front of the box, it's going to make me make them not symmetrical. And I cannot stand for that. <laughs> Maybe I am being too picky, but uh, I paid the money for this kit. I will be too picky if I want to be. Right? Because now basically these... They're going to go like this on each of the, the things to create the, the thing. It wants me to put it so that. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do what it more or less wants me to do. Okay. Which is the long piece goes on the long axis and the short piece goes on the short axis. I'm more than happy with that. Let's play Beard Breath of the Wild again. See, here's here's something I like. I don't feel like I have to play Breath of the Wild again because I definitely didn't 100% that game. I played until I was satisfied and then I was done. And now, like, in retrospect, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I wasn't. Maybe now, like, that satisfaction is worn off. But I can go back to it and there's new satisfaction I can juice out of it because I didn't wring it dry that first time. Okay, and this page says put one of the leaves or the other. Yo. Whoa, okay, we got to talk about those in a minute. Um, but the idea is this is big enough that this will sit in the middle of it and create like a. Here, I'm going to hold this up to the other camera. But this is going to create like a nice. I love. I love that it has like a stage. You were giving it its, its own unique stage, and I love that. And I. Very simple, but also like. In terms of like visual design, the wooden stage mixing it like it, it makes the the sort of the black edges of the the pot I guess it is becomes a separation between the the brown wood of the stage and the brown wood of the tree itself. So it it's it's interrupting that flow and, and giving that sense of color changing. I I love it. That's that's all I'm getting at. I love it. And I'm going to put these aside and I can stack them the way that they're intended to be. Excellent. And this says, hey, pick one. And I'm saying, cool. Do you got to go back and build them first? Oh, boy. Welcome to Newgrounds Radio. Like a... Visit us. Oh, pass your check. About that. So I'm also afraid because sometimes when I sit up too much, I leave frame. Uh, but uh, health comes first. Take care. Take care of your back, y'all. Okay. Yeah. No. That's. Humans are built poorly. Humans are terribly. You know, I think humans have a pretty good design. There's just absolutely zero uh, quality assurance on the production line. You know, they sell you that lifetime warranty, but wouldn't you know it, it always uh, runs out right the moment where suddenly you need it. Uh There's some brown pieces in here. That's exciting. Okay. Here's all our... Well, okay. Here's a lot of our greens. And then... 
Got big greens. We got little greens. We got Rick greens from The Walking Dead. I don't want to joke. I don't know if it's a, a working joke. Okay. So like this, and then we put a thingy on it, and you're like, oh, yay, that's so cute. And then you just slap a big old slappy boy on it. And boom. Okay. Now we got a leaf. Uh, and then we're going to put another one of these on top so that the, the, the bar and the leaf are sandwiched between these two things. And then we're going to hook that onto it. And that's a leaf. Now let me guess. Do this a dozen more times. Nope, we're going to be building different ones. Cool. All right, this one we're doing thrice. Start with the discs. Add two bricks with the holes in them. Okay. It's only one way that they will end up going because of the nature of the symmetry of the involved pieces. Okay, we're going to take this weird guy and run him through both. Oh, don't break. Oh, hang on. I didn't have that lined up properly. There. One. Two. Three. Oh, these are probably going to go at the end of these um these tube trunks because that's got the matching uh square pin that'll go in there. Okay. Now This goes here, and the hooky bit comes off the right side. Oh, did I? What you get? You add more buttons, and then that's just more for more buttons to forget to press. I love that. I do love the press buttons. That's there's no sarcasm there. Sarcasm. This one goes here, and another hooky bit goes this way. Okay. Uh oh. Hey, there's a hooky bit hiding. Wait, that one already had it. Okay, now that's like everything but these. Uh, green plate goes on top. And this gets a new grabby arm over here. And that's all the brown pieces. Okay. And okay, so this little module that we made, make three more. That's really easy, actually. Thankfully, that's really easy. Famed Staples ad campaign. That'll be easy. I 
How does it want me to put the... Okay, I'll have to look at that closely when I get it built. Also, it wants me to create three of these for each. So we're making nine of these. So this is going to use up a lot of our parts here. Oh, and then... And then putting all the green leaves on the trees, step 69. Oh, it's like they put the weed number and the sex number into one number. What is the sex number? What is the weed number? What if every number was the same number? What if there were only, what if there were only three numbers? Computer nightmares. What? I don't. I do. Let's not kid ourselves. I certainly do. Do what? Ah, who knows? I do. I do. I probably do. I don't know. Four. See, this is the part where it just feels like an assembly line. But thankfully, like, the thing that makes the part look so complex is, is this big leaf and the fact that we're going to be layering them kind of uh uh in a certain way um but they're not actually uh complex parts to assemble on their own so it really is just about taking the time you know what this is a nice kit i'm happy to take the time Again, bonsai tree, meditation, tedium. This is there's something thematic about this being the process. You're saying one clip, two clip, three clip, and this one sort of rotates to hang over the middle, and that's our that's our big leaf module. <laughs> big leaf. I wonder if it does intend for me to keep them all straight. Big straight leaves on 69? No. I don't, I do not even know what I'm suggesting at over here. Mm. Mm, for now. This is a good classy track. This can't be the end of this. Oh God, it's not. It wants me to put, okay, but where does it want me to put? 33 of the big leaves. And 10 of the little ones. Wait, how many modules did we make? We made 10. So 10. So each one gets one of these. But how are we placing 33 of these? They're not all equal. Uh, I'm assuming we'll place 30 equally, and then there will be three that get uniquely placed. I'm assuming one on each of the modules, because that's our other sort of, our other symmetrical three that we have. Our other top level three, you know? Welcome to Newgrounds Radio.
visit us at www.newgrounds. But so it's saying basically this I don't know why we didn't do this as part of the last step. Oh, because this had to be connected, I guess. So on the front ones, these go oh no. The front one gets a little one. Then a big one. And then on this back not even a backmost one. The one above the backmost one. That gets one. And then here on the top back of the middle to hide that sandwiching piece. That gets one. They're all going to be like this. Except for apparently three that aren't. I'll worry about that later. Right, I'll split up these big ones and the small ones. Because I could probably place all the small ones at once. And just be done with them. And those are three extra ones at the end. That we'll figure out where they go. I have our one model over here. You know what? I'm fine if they're all symmetrical. That would make them easy. Or they're all identical, I guess. That makes them easy to assemble. Okay, and it looks like we had 11 of these anyway. That's okay. It makes sense. This is the kind of part that you get one or two extras of because of the chance of losing stuff in shipping. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. You know, it's it's three times ten. That would be thirty. So I don't know where you get thirty-three from. Oh, wait a second. Because, no. Hold on. Got excited too soon. Right. Okay, wait. That matches that one. And it does look like it'll match the rest. Oh, and then one in the middle of each of the green plates up here. That's the part that's hard to see. Got it. Problem solved. I can now continue in peace. Uh, I've been told that. Oh, <laughs> people told me a lot of things in the past. A lot of people told me the places I can go. Uh, Dr. Seuss was one of the first, and uh, people just really ran with it from there. Um, where, where am I getting with this? Um, people have told me that, like, I obsess? I don't know if obsess is the right word, but, like, I do have a thing where, like, I need to know. If something seems weird, I need to know why, and, like... Personally, I've always thought of this as like a, all right, I want a healthy thing, but I will say like maybe a useful thing because, um, boy, how, how do I even phrase this? I don't want to say that like it's a misunderstanding, but like if you've ever said, that just doesn't make sense, right? I've always sort of felt like not making sense doesn't exist in, in a certain way, kind of like the way lazy doesn't exist. Because um, if something doesn't make sense, generally that just means that there's information about it that you are missing um and the the good the good this is good news because we have ways to gather information we can ask questions we can observe we can do experiments yada 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 whatever 
level of an investigation gathering you are up for. Um, and, you know, sometimes the reason why something doesn't make sense, the information you're missing is like, oh, somebody was lying to me. And actually this thing that I was assuming was true was a lie. And that's a piece of information that, you know, changes your context and suddenly, hey, things make sense. Sometimes it's like, oh, why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. Well, it's because this other thing was going on. Um, we were just watching um, the first season of 24 over the past couple of days. And let me tell you, um, this applies a lot there in this sense. Okay, the, these leaves are done. And there's only one extra of these. That's impressive. Uh, it can go on my combined stack of extras. So that lets us do this too. Nope, that one doesn't go like that. That piece still doesn't have a good way to connect. All right. Um, but like, you know, not things not making sense because of a missing piece of information is like classic literature. I mean, like, I bet you could be like, oh, yeah, no, there's, you know, that's that's why I like dramatic tragedy works, right? Is because the, the is because the audience gets a piece of information that the characters don't. And so the characters are running around going like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Is it this? What's going on? And like the characters are going around it, having trouble. And the audience just goes like, no, here's the thing that you don't know. And, you know, the 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 audience is watching this slow motion train wreck. Uh, and the, the reason that they have that, that that they have that experience is their separation of the characters, which is based in um, having additional information. Right. Um, boy, there is the opposite of that where um uh the character in the show would have a diff additional information that the audience doesn't have and uh that's that's like a mystery show right that's like a detective show where it's like i mean in the classical sense that's your your sherlock holmes because your Sherlock Holmes says like, ah, well, this is easily solvable because of this bullshit thing that I know happened off screen that I have not revealed to you, the characters in the scene or you, the audience at home. Um, but like once I introduce this thing, you'll go, oh, that puts everything together. You have a revelation moment like. Like, yes, the like, revelation of information is sort of. It's dramatically important, but it also is is in real life mechanically important in, in a lot of ways. It, it is sort of emotionally important, depending on, you know, if if having that information and situations making sense changes the, the emotional reaction you have to it and, and things, right? Um, I'm trying to get off topic with this. Oh, uh, but I'm a jerk. <laughs> Because, um, the, the thing that, the thing that people have always told me is like, I get, a, I get a lot of, Hey, just let things go. Um, I'm sure I've talked about this on the last couple of dreams because I'm really sick of hearing about it. So I still have to vent about it. Uh, um, and part of this, let things go is the reason I don't let things go is because I am always looking to answer this question because like if something doesn't make sense to me the the thing that i am aware of is, are these mechanisms of if something doesn't make sense to me that means i am missing information and missing information i'm i'm lazy and trying to get stuff done using wrong or missing information really missing information is just like well if I'm working off of missing information, I am going to make bad decisions. Um, and everything that I do is going to be harder because, you know, my decisions were bad. My assumptions were bad. It's having the wrong information is making more work for myself down the line. 
and I'm lazy and I don't want to have to do all that extra work. And I have this secret uh, cheats and hints code line about how to um, not have to put up with that work. And it's, hey, find out the information you're missing. Like not understanding something isn't a an experience. It is not the, the end experience of something. That is the flag to say there is information here that you're missing, which then, okay, so that leads to the action of let's go get the information. Um, but people don't like that. People, the, the number of people, oh, I'm touching, I'm touching these frogs. They are like exactly bubblegum colored. I love them. They are friends. I wonder if these are like Kiro's cousins or something. Um, they are amazing and they are great and I love them and I'm so happy to be working with these. Just having this many, um, okay, and they all sit in line on the branch that they are sitting on. I can do that. Um, really? Okay. Sure, I can do it like this. And then, no, those two. Oh, these are actually also symmetrical because it's the front left and the back right. Front left, back right. Front left, back right, front left, back right. Okay, so these are all also going to be identical too. Useful. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is, but I find that everybody... my my sort of insistence on finding the in, the missing information to make everyone lives easier everyone else seems to take as a problem as a pain like like i like i feel like it's like a self-serving thing because it's like this idea of like oh no if if we put in the effort now to find this information everything else is going to be easier they don't see that so what they end up seeing is like okay well you're putting in a lot of um you're putting in a lot of effort now for reasons we cannot discern um and it seems like wasted effort it does not make sense it wraps around like it, it's but it's one of the favorite things I ever I ever learned in in learned saw whatever it was kind of a thought experiment. Um, oh, and then these just all go on the tip. Oh, the two slightly different shades of pink are really satisfying. The, these are hmm, they're almost not quite red enough to be pink. Shoot, I think they are light purples. Bitch, they might actually be light purple. I'm pink. I might great son of a bitch. Damn it. Fuck. Damn it. Um. But like, uh, the idea was like, hey, uh, the argument of, well, logic is the basis of all arguments and reasoning. Um, and you, it is impossible to disagree with that because if you disagree with that, um, you would have to present an argument made of logic and reasoning in order to counter the argument that logic and reasoning is the basis of arguments. And I was just like, yeah, that's a Mobius strip in an argument. I love that shit. Okay, we have we have more fun facts here. So, um, <clears throat> the colorful blossoms on this tree are actually frog elements from earlier Lego registered trademark sets. It's the first time these single quote frogs have been seen in this light purple color. These are unique pieces for this set. Also, they made sure to future-proof it by saying the first time, because now that they've generated them, you know they're going to try and find excuses to use them again. I have no problem with that. Give me the pink frogs. Sorry, light purple. Fine. I hate that looking at... Lo looking at them... Looking at them next to these, these are more pink than these are. These are a very, like, desaturated purple. Very light purple. I hate it. I hate it that that was so right. I thought it was being pompous, but now I agree with it. Damn it. 
I'm just mad because I was wrong earlier on in the assumption that they were being pompous. But like, no, it's light purple. Dang it. What was I going on about? Oh, the the logic thing. Like the 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 logic is like a cool like self assured Mobius thing, and it's sort of like very trustworthy in that way because it's like yeah no you, you can't you can't argue with it because this argument is that you need it in order to argument with it argument with it that ain't words. Okay, we're doing this again. So two blocks, piece goes through. Okay, so. And then we're building three of these. Okay, so same thing before. These are going to be the nodules that go on the end of the major trunks. But it also looks like looking at this, they're going to have to be different at some point because these leaves uh, connect in a different way. Use these. So we'll see. Although that's a bar on this. So maybe it could be identical. I'm looking at it. It won't be identical, but like it could have been maybe. Um, but yeah, the, the, the recursive logic self proving thing. Um, I, I feel like it's the same kind of way. Cause it's just like, like people aren't understanding why I don't just accept that something makes sense. And instead look for the more information on it to them. That doesn't make sense. And I'm like, no, it does make sense. You just don't, you're just missing the piece of information that makes it make sense, which then explains the rest of the argument. Um, and I, I don't know. I think I have a very high tolerance for mental activity, you know, like, like, oh, you, you asked me to do some yard work. No, I'm, I hurt my back, uh, at the end of, you know, I, my, my back is thrown out within 10 minutes, especially these days. I tried to shovel the walk the other day. Cause we had like an inch and a quarter of snow and I have no endurance anymore it took me a second to find that word i have zippo zero zilt nada endurance um and that's a bummer i lost my train of thought oh that's not a oh that's a that okay yeah these are still very hard to tell what's going on on these pages Okay, so we get these side hookies. And then it's covered by the 90 degree and a piece to even it up. And then a key rack. A front facing key rack. And a uh, step down scoop to do it. And then we're going to put a plate on there. And that looks like it's going to be our. And of course, put the arm up here. That looks like it's going to be our module. More steps to it. And put the leaves on. Great. So let's build more of these. So physical endurance, nothing, nada, nothing. N never have been I, exactly once I was able to do, uh, run a sub 10 minute mile in high school. That was the very last time I weighed under 200 pounds. And let me tell you, I, um, was at the doctor the other day and I am pushing 300, which is not good. I need to do something about that. Trust me. It ain't all muscle. I know, I know I'm a prime specimen looking over here, but, uh, it ain't all muscle. Um, <laughs> I just made myself a little sad. Okay. Hang on. Give me a second. Um, for some reason when it comes to mental energy, like, like, yeah, I can play video games all day, no stress. Uh, I can, if, if, when I have a day where I'm, like, getting back into coding in a major way, I can do that for, for hours on end and just lose hours to it and just sort of, like, flow with it when, um, honestly, you know, having discussions like this and, and sort of these, like, sort of, 
philosophical, logical, analytical sort of talks. These are, I do this for fun. That is how uh, low a drain on my energy it is, you know? Um, so I think we're doing the same thing. Okay, no. Sit. Okay, these are a little different. So, taking this even, I'm gonna go one up, one down, and then out to either side. And then it looks like same placement as all of the others. And then this, then we make th three of these that will attach to the three hook points on the three modules. And that'll be all of our, our frog leaves here. Okay, great. So I'll just get building on these. Um, but yeah, like, like I'll, I'll, I'll have thoughts and discussions like this for fun. Um, that, that is how low of a drain is it is on me. And what I'm coming to my, to, for me to try to understand it, what I've, what I've come to so far is I think, you know, I, the way that I am on these things must just be opposite most people um you know uh, uh whereas like they don't have the sort of like i i'm or like i must have like a high old, higher mental energy endurance than, than most people because like like i'm trying to do it for fun but if for them it's a chore well yeah people get annoyed when you're when you're dumping a chore on them for no particular reason um and it would also maybe explain why it doesn't um, like come, come naturally to them and why they might not have arrived at the same, uh, uh, reasoning that I have on these things. And like, I am sounding so much like the 14 year old boy. I am the coolest boy in the universe and people just don't recognize it yet. Uh, kind of thing. Um, and yes, I am. I own up to that. I never... <laughs> particularly grew out of that i do think i'm one of the coolest boys in the universe <laughs> um i just try not to be mean about it but we got we got that it's a laminated plaque at least, probably more than one copy of it somewhere in this house but is that plaque that says it is hard to be humble when you're as great as i am my dad made the plaques i simply agree it's hereditary i don't think there's anything either of us can do about it I apologize. Um, Welcome to New Grand was there a moral to this whole story? No. I just need something to talk about, and, and that's apparently what's on my mind tonight. That Yes, I put in a lot of effort to find missing information, but it's also that very much that idea of a... Um, I would rather put in the effort to find the information and have everything else go smoother than to try to put it ahead than to let them the known missing information lay and and you know move forward making a mess every step of the way because of that missing information um, some things you can do you know you can go forward and be like well we don't know this and we can account for that um but, you know, that that is, again, a level of, okay, in accounting for that, that is a, a sort of, like, higher level of mental energy you need to use to to, to account for the missing. Um, so, for a lot of people, it's just like, well, if we don't know it, let's just ignore it. And I'm just like, no, that's, I am too lazy for that. That is going to be way too much trouble later. Let's, let's not. That's upsetting when you say that. Let's just ignore it. Like, no. There's a problem. Let's solve it rather than let it cascade into more and bigger problems. You know how lazy I am? I don't like when there are problems. Bad news. We're alive. We're on Earth. There are always problems. But you know what? Deal with the ones that you can. 
So that way you only have to deal with the rest of them. Yes, there will always be problems. No, that is not a valid excuse on why you don't need to try to solve problems every step of the way. That's that. Ooh, that's the same like anti-vax argument from early on. That was just like, well, you know, people are going to get it anyway. So why should anybody bother getting vaccinated? It's just like, no, that's that's that is the the like defining struggle of the human spirit right it's just like these are impossible odds we're gonna do it anyway because it's the right thing because we're working on hope because uh you know that's if you if you want to be you know more rash like uh, overly rational about it and it's like well uh uh humans are flawed creatures and maybe we are flawed in our our recognition of of impossible odds and maybe you know the flaw works in our favor and it turns out this won't be impossible right we are mistaken in believing that it will be um so do it anyway do do the right thing anyway even if it's what is it Man, th th this was interesting because this was a, a discussion that came up in, in game design in school, but it was like, is there R remind me to come back around on this because I'm, I'm going to forget by the time I get through this thought, but let me finish this thought first. But if you're playing a game and it is now impossible for you to win should you still play to win should you still make every best choice available to you every like like th this is the most optimal this is the most uh progressive this is the you know this is the best choice available to me should you still bother making the best choice available to you you know geared towards winning the game if winning the game is actually already impossible for you um And I don't remember where I landed on that debate, if I'm being honest, because like, so, you know, we were, you know, we were a bunch of students in school for game design. So that, that was the first way that we approached it. And, and the thought was like, well, um, game balance is often designed around um game balance is often designed around but i mean ultimately yes but 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 so, so that's the thing like so so we we were coming at it like like You know, the game expects you to play to win, even if you can't win, right? Because your other option is that if you're not playing to win, you, if you don't play to win, you actually end up disrupting or, or you might have the option to play to just disrupt, which, um, like you may not be able to win, but you might be able to fuck somebody else over, right? It's just like, oh, I can't win. But I can make it so that the person who is currently winning doesn't win. You can, you, you might be able to become a kingmaker, right? Um, which is, which is weird, and that, that leaves you in a position where it's like, well, I can't do anything for my own benefit. I could do something maybe for somebody else's benefit, or I could do, I could, you know, let my decision be driven by vindictiveness, and that's just like, ooh, okay, and like. On, on the one on the one side, then it's like, like okay, well, you know, I, I I believe that then went off and like, okay, is there a way to design a system so that you know, a, a system that doesn't sort of, or, or or like that's the thing, right? Because like, okay, those are those were the things you would be playing for since you cannot play to win, um, and it's like, wow, we if we've invented a system where the best option available to you might be to play for vindictiveness. That is a bad system. Maybe that means we should tear it down and, and rebuild the system. Um, but, but at the same time, it's just like, okay, well, you know, 
playing to like I'm I never saying stop playing. To to be clear, never no not playing is never an option in this. Like it's like like no, you keep going. But like what your goals are at some point, you know, if if playing to win isn't an option anymore, what do you do? And like I've always been like, you know, if you if you cannot if 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 you are not in a position where you can support yourself, you should still work to support. Um, so, like, even if you can't win, you should still, you know. I mean, I, I, I've always been in, in this idea of like, um, idea like. In a, in a very meta level, like the a well designed game system is actually encouraging very high scoring but very even games because if it's and and this is rough. I never thought this all the way through, but but the idea being is that. Um, if the game is high scoring, then everybody is doing things. Everybody is having agency. Everybody is in a position to do things. And if it is an even game and you are not sure who is going to win, then it is both an engaging game because you are always, um, you are probably always in the running to win and you don't even run into that position of like, well, I can't even win anymore. So why would I bother trying? That question doesn't even come up. Um, and more than that, you can get into this, uh, well, maybe that was the two things, keep people engaged and keep people, um, sort of in a, in a position that they could have it. Um, because, cause like, you know, the, the, the worst thing you can do is to, to have somebody be like, it's like, okay, well. I can't win anymore, so I'm not going to try to win anymore. What do I have available to me? Oh, what if I just drained everybody's resources so that actually nobody else can win anymore, right? Um, like, what What if I just become a drain? Again, like, like, don't become a drain of, invic uh, of vindictiveness. That's not invic invidicus. Vind vindic One of these is a game that was like a Mob and Ogie spinoff. Um, I don't know what word that is, but like, you know, keep, cause the, the worst thing in games is kind of like, um, it's why I, I, as like a hobby, you know, when I, when I have a week off and I'm bored, I will design new versions of risk because the thing about risk is that, um, Cl the classic risk that most people think of when you just say risk not lord of the rings risk not metal gear risk not uh risks 2142 or whatever it's called 2022 <gasps> do we need to do we need to play that game are we in the year of that that future risk game i don't know um but like when you think of risk you think of the game where you know everybody goes and then Either the game becomes like a universal stalemate um, where it just becomes of like the game ends when enough people concede because they're tired, which isn't a satisfying end. Or it becomes the game where um, one player gains momentum and gets so far ahead that they like the the only result of the game is that they could win or the as long as the other players don't sandbag them or but like but like to play the game properly the game has to you have to play out this known situation which isn't fun isn't interesting and is worse to have to go through the um go through the motions of playing the game when the outcome is already known. Right. So, uh, it's like, I've, I've always liked the version of risk risk that is like, well, okay, you're never going to play the world domination because that is 
the most boring way to play. It's like, no, I need to crush everybody else off the map. And it's just like, no, that's going to take a long time and not be fun for everyone but one person. Because at one at one point, you know, that is going to be possible for exactly one person. And that and at that point, the game is not fun anymore. Um, but. But so you look at it being like, all right, so so when is the game over? When when do we reset? When is like like no one person like when you reach that point where like there's no way for other players to come back, that should be the end of the game, right? Um, because then just skip the part that makes everybody miserable. It's close, and then as soon as it's not close enough anymore, as soon as, soon as the end is like known, cool, we're done. Unless you want to do weird like <sighs> Unless you want to make the Mario Party version of Risk, where even if one player gets, you know, crushed, basically, well, actually, it's not the worst idea. The idea that, like, the point at which one player becomes, you know, the the obvious, you know, winner, um, it becomes a sort of countdown situation uh, where there is there is now a timer for all the losing players to focus on alternative sources of, of victory that then you have this weird calculated actual actual winner at the end of it um i'm also just not a big fan of those anyway because that's always like the you know it's it's for for math nerds who in who are satisfied with with pyrrhic victories it's like no we lost the obvious goal but actually if you look at this we secretly won in the end to the things that nobody was paying attention to and it's just like yeah nobody was paying to that because paying attention to that because like that's not the interesting stuff why is that an element here um that that is like a bolting on ways to win that don't address the problems with the initial uh the, the the initial systems is like a a that is a a ineloquent solution as far as i'm concerned ineloquent sure um does this full no it kind of says they all stick out i may have to turn them to get them to stick out though because down like this it can't go but i can can sort of rotate them both so that they stick out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Like 45 degrees from each other, and then there, and then there, and then there. And then. Ooh, I really like the look of that. Just okay, so just the fact that these are stacked up, there's sort of like an upward spiral that's going on that really gives this a good feeling of, of volume that I was not expecting. So this is one module of this. Of the cherry blossom, and this is one module of of the the regular leaves. I am holding them both with the pins towards in the same direction. This actually feels like it has a lot of coverage. It has like a lot of upwards volume. That's really interesting. Um, but it is wider than it is long. This one has like the one like one really long dimension. Um, and it feels a bit flatter, but like it, it, it does feel like it stretches more. This one is more evenly, this, this, this one feels like a, a popcorn kernel that's popped. Whereas this one feels more like an, an overhang. They both have good things about them. I don't think there's like one good answer. Good news. I have all of them. So I'll just be able to, to swap them out and, and decide. Um, game design what point of playing point of winning ability to win oh the the, the struggle of of do you keep playing it even if you can't win like so so yeah, like okay the, the point is that eventually Talking about that as a larger philosophical question breaks down when you talk about it uh, as a form of games, because the thing about games is that eventually games end and maybe you can start a new game. Maybe, maybe you don't, but like eventually games have a start, games have an end, and then, you know, life goes on around them. And that's not true of life. So it's, it's never going to be a perfect metaphor. Um, 
But the ideas of if in your life you can establish systems that you, you know the, the things available to you the 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 means afforded to you by the system you operate in whether that's a game or a society um can can encourage particular behaviors and so at some point you just have to ask the question what behaviors do i want to encourage and like yeah it should be like Even if you can't, the, the, the thing that I've always come to, the, the, the sort of philosophy that I arrived at was like, even if you can't, even if you can no longer win, you should keep playing and your secondary goal is to help others to win, is to keep the rest of the game going, you know? Ideally, you 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 operate in a system where um, supporting others also brings you back into the race. Supporting others is is how you get closer to winning. Um, but that's tricky, and that makes it hard to feel like a competition. And just the nature of real life and scarcity and such things might never allow for that to to be realized in like a meaningful like human life philosophical way um but i think it's a good basis i think it's a good basis to see what you can do with and and, and see if you can make anything out of it anything meaningful out of it um the thing that i really like um is in puzzle strike one of the Serlin games which puzzle strike is badass whether you're playing it in the physical or digital forms that game rules. Um, it has a free-for-all mode. And on paper, I am in love with it because the idea of the mode is um, as soon as one player loses and is out of the game, the game is over. And whoever was currently winning is the ultimate winner. Not about who gets the last strike. Not about who does, you know, who did the most weird side stuff during the game. Just whoever is currently winning by the obvious metric is the winner as soon as one player is out. Um, and the thing that that system affords you is that if one, if one player is about to die, anyone can defend that player. So if you, if you have, the winner is about to land a critical blow and, and take out the, the backmost player. You, anyone else can jump in to protect him to be like, no, because, which, you know, honestly, it's a selfish way because it's saying like, oh no, if, if the game ends now, I'm not currently winning. So, you know, I'm, I, I intend to prolong the game for the sake of, of, of improving my own state status position, whatever. But what it leads to is this weird, like, social support structure that's inherent to the system of the game, where it's just like, it's like, the old, like, unless you're the person winning, you never want to go after the lowliest person. Um, and, like, if, if, Unless you're winning, you always want to protect the lowliest person, basically. So, you know, in a four-player game, that means you got one player who's winning, one player who's in uh, in last place, and two people who's like, like, two people who are being encouraged to protect the weakest, and that warms my heart, like straight up from from like a like a. a that is the most like humanitarian game design decision I have ever seen. And I love it. And I love everything about it. And I love that it, it it's like, no, this is a free for all competition. Everyone is your competition. Also, 
there are three positions you can be in that that encourage you to support last place to support last place not even just protect yourself but to protect the lowliest among us yo yo it's incredible I, I love that i am i am keen to to like use that design ethos in as much as possible when i'm working on games these days um and i i that that's sort of what i take forward it's like it's like It, it, it kind of goes back to the thing. If if you reach a point where the question is, do I even bother to continue playing? Then the system has failed you because th that means the system has left you down. And, and like, if, if, if it can become within our power to change the system, we should pick a system that says, um, even while you are fighting for yourself, you should still be lifting those around you and and keeping everyone from reaching a point of being unable to win or participate or, or what have you. Like, it doesn't really help answer the question of what do you do when you're in that position, but... I don't know. Maybe that makes me an idealist. So it's just like, it's like, I don't know what to tell you, but hopefully we can keep anyone else from being in this position is we try to, I don't know how to help you, but I can at least try to help people from becoming in your position. You know, that's, I don't know if that's a good answer. I think it's a, I hope it's a well-meaning answer, but that's okay. Anyway, I got all these frogs on these branches. Um, I am so scared of working with this because, um, because it's full of loose plates. Um, but while we're here, I'm going to put both leaves on and we can get a, an idea of how easy it is to swap them out. Um, and we'll get a nice close up on the side cam since I can't tilt this to show it off anymore. Um, and maybe we can pick together which one we think looks best. Okay, so the one that's just here. Welcome to Newgrounds Radio. Visit us at www.newgrounds.com. This one sticks sideways such that it covers the extra space that the one long arm covers. That's what that's for, okay? And then... One that goes he he here. Wow, that sits shockingly flat. It's not actually flat, but it's closer than I was expecting to being flat. I am so afraid to touch this now. It's got so wait, why did we put this here? If we don't use that. We we got all these open whoa here we go. We got all these open pivots. On on the on the pink ones, we at least put a plate there to hide it, but we didn't have plates for this one. I don't have, like, a sack of plates sitting around me that I forgot to put on. Nope. It won't go straight up like that. It kind of has to be this way. Oh, wait, right. On the inside, they're on smooth pegs, so they do have one axis of free rotation. Okay. So this this is here. Let me bring us over to... Hello. Um, you know, actually, I have a bigger one over here. Slightly bigger. Um, so here we have it with the green leaves which I'm not actually sure how I feel about this now that I'm looking at it. 
it, it feels like, okay, maybe ultimately I should like do some bending and like get a, a little more like droop, a little more sideways cover. Okay. That already looks better actually. Like it, it is, it is much more, um, one, two, three clear nodes than I was expecting, uh, to see. Like, I, I feel like from certain angles, it looks here. Yeah, if you, if you catch it, like from, from like this angle, it looks amazing. It looks like it's, you know, so sort of like too close together and one far away. It, it looks like there, there's amounts of coverage all around. I think from certain angles, it looks amazing, but I don't know from from other angles it just looks sort of it's just like oh no that's that's just that's just three nodes huh maybe if I play with the the way that the leaves hang I would totally consider rebuilding these modules because like right now it's like the 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 peg is here and there's like a leaf this way and this way and then the other one between it I would consider uh flipping the way it's built so that way it, it sort of like mirrors into the other direction maybe that would help um this one on top yeah when, I, when i'm looking at this one on top this one could like end up over here for for more coverage that ooh, that that feels that feels a little better that feels much fuller okay okay um but before making a decision Welcome back to the build camp. Uh, okay, so don't break it. One, two, three. Also, hey, these leaf modules are huge. I have no idea where I'm gonna store it. I'm gonna have to get like a a little box just to store these in all together. Cause that's that's like the pile of leaves is almost as big as the base itself, and this is gonna be like a this like make room to display it on my shelf kind of deal jeez right. uh, so we're saying this one's gonna go kind of here uh, one more okay I'm gonna put that there. this this one also has a lot of sort of leeway on where it's positioned at least this is definitely gonna be like whichever one I decide on I then spend a bunch of time um, really fiddling with the positions to, to get something that I, I love the, the look and feel of. Ooh, that, that doesn't that doesn't seem right. Uh. Getting good even coverage. That seems to be the challenge. Well, these, you really want these to face away from the pegs. There we go. I feel okay. Okay. Wow, yeah, that feels like it has so much more coverage already. And let's check it from the side cam. Na, 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 na. That, oh, that actually looks really nice. Like I said, I need to play. So like, like, what do we got over here? Like I, I would need to play with this to, to get sort of a, a nice feeling cover. I think it's, it's again, going to be the kind of thing where it's going to look really good from certain angles and I can improve certain angles by, by shifting everything around a little bit. But in general, it's going to be like a, um, actually this one, like even, even from the, from this like sort of dead area on the back, I think that looks really good. That looks like a really full coverage. I think I am going to go, I'm going to play with these to see if I can get a, a arrangement. I really like, um, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Oh, and then of course you put it not just on itself but it's going to have its little stand that it's sitting on and tilting cameras i think that looks amazing i think that looks absolutely fantastic you know what it is i like the green because the green with all the wood does go sort of more naturally together like to just the the sort of 
I mean, you see it more often. We don't, you know. Like, like, like maybe if this came in like orange and it felt like fall. Oh no. Am I considering buying more parts to create other seasonal variants of the leave modules to put on this? I'm considering it. It's going to require a bunch more thought to figure it out, but I'm considering it. Okay. Hang on. There's, there's one more. Back us up so the chat can be on screen again. There's one more uh, piece of trivia here, uh, and I do want to read it out because this is amazing. With 101 frogs available, this is the greatest number of frogs using any single Lego registered trademark set. None more frogs. We have reached maximal current frogs. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. That was the wrong screen. I'm I'm having a day over here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this for now. As as much as I like the green for the the color palette, um, I really like the coverage on this. And <laughs> maybe I'm gonna. You know what? What I'm really going to do is I'm going to play and make a decision off screen. I do think both of these look amazing. I love that these are light purple frogs. Still mad that that wasn't pompous. That was correct. They are light purple, not just pink. Um, but yeah, I think that's what we're doing here. So actually, yeah, why did I even come back here? Um, hey, folks, let's, let's, let's get another look here. I, I wish I had a... Ooh. Ooh. Is this a good or a bad review? I don't have, like, a... Take the box. Can I put the entire tray on the box? I'll still have to hold it, but I won't be holding it, like, up. Uh, that's almost tall enough. I just, I just want to get it in shot. While, while I, while I close up over here, um, this is, this is really cool. I'm really happy with this set. I'm going to struggle to make enough shelf space to display it anywhere, but it is going to be worth it. Um, I want to say, hey everybody, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for joining me on this. I wasn't sure if we were going to get this all done in one night or if this was going to be enough to be uh, two sets or two sittings. But all things considered, this is not a particularly big or complex set. It's got a lot of fiddly bits, but they were really easy to just sort of like churn out once you once you saw the pattern. Um, and I'm super satisfied with it. It looks, you know, I, I was thinking some of the individual pieces looked sort of weird on their own. Um, and I'm still absolutely aghast at this gravel solution that we have here. Um, but all together up on an, up on this little platform here, I am in love. This thing is absolutely beautiful. I am not ashamed of the amount of money that I spent on this kit. <laughs> uh, this is super cool. This is super cool. This is like inspiring is what this is. Um, so I'm happy. This is how I spent my evening. I am grateful uh that you came out to join me and hang out um it's uh oh let's see here this is the first saturday night stream of 2022 is that a fun fact yeah let's call that a fun fact i'll make that decision um this this is uh first stream of 2022 we didn't have one uh last week because we instead did new year's eve jackbox on friday if you missed out on that um vod should still be up on new year's or, or vod should still be up for a little while longer i don't think there's going to be a proper uh archive of that just because of reasons i think i think there's going to be a partial archive because we did play champed up we did generate fighters 
and I did already buy the booster packs based on the games of champs up that we played. So when those come in, I'll probably do a pack crack and link to that part of the archive for the context. Um, man, I can't wait for those. I got a bunch of good stuff in the mail. I can't wait. Um, let's see here. Uh, right. So like I was saying, um, this is done. This is amazing. This is what we've been sort of, pardon the pun, building towards with these uh, model streams for uh, months now. Um, I'm happy we could go out on something so beautiful and amazing that I'm so excited to just have in view for the foreseeable future. Um, but that also means that uh, calling it with the model streams for now, um, if they do happen again, it'll be a special occasion, not a regular thing. Um, oh, we're here already. I hadn't fully decided what was going to happen after these. Um, maybe, uh, so we were alternating drive streams and, uh, drive streams and build streams. I think I don't have anything particularly interesting for a, a drive stream coming up. Um, yeah, no, we did like the flight simulator gag. Uh, uh, so I think if drive games happen, it'll be out of, um, actually, you know, do, doing a drive stream that was like, just like set aside and be like, no, today we are doing a four hour road trip live stream, like as a special event, that might be the better way to handle that going forward. Uh, point is, I, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to be turning Saturdays into uh, backlog and long play games. Um, so, like, I got Chrono Trigger sitting here that I've never played more than halfway through, probably not even that far. Um, so if I can figure out how to do game shark stuff in retro arch and just make it so I have one over leveled character and everything else is the same. Um, I could start with that and just play through. I've got a backlog of games that I've been wanting to check out and been wanting to show off. And it's going to be a great example for that. And it's going to be, I got cool stuff coming up. Uh, this, everything with the model kits, this has been fun. This has been great. Um, we got some fantastic stuff out of it. And like I said, I've got, I've got pre-ordered model kits in the mail and I'm going to have fun building them. I think we're just not going to make it a stream unless there's something particularly uh, special or fun or stream worthy about them. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, we got a thing, other cool thing coming up. So come back next Saturday for something I have not decided. It's a good thing I have a week to figure it out. I should make a note on my to-do list to actually pick something to do next week. Okay, cool. You know, you know what? Uh, Motortown is out in early access. Uh, so I would happily just do a three, four hour stream of delivering oranges around that island. Yeah, I would totally do that. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. Maybe not. We'll find out next week. Um, but again, thank you for hanging out. Uh, the company is, is always wonderful. It's always lovely to have you here. Um, I enjoyed myself. I hope you enjoyed this time too. No matter how exhaustingly philosophical my ramblings turn into, um, I very much appreciate the company. I very much appreciate the the attention. I appreciate the appreciation. If you appreciate me, I appreciate that. This is a one in one out kind of no. I just, I don't know what that means. Um, the point is, thank you. Uh, Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I will see you soon. Until next time I see you. Uh, one hand is holding up, so it's going to be a one-handed one. Take care of each other. Have a great weekend, everybody.